My name is Stephen Henderson and I play drums. David Bowden, I play the bass. Uh, my name is Fergus McCready and I play the piano. I think the first gig we may have ever done, so that, um, David and Stephen, they were a couple of years above me at college. When I came, I think they were in fourth year or something. Um, so I think I actually kind of felt like a big deal to play with them, almost like, you know, scary. Um, but uh, I think our first gig actually as a trio was playing with, with Bob Mincer at some student concert or something <laughs> like that, which is quite weird to think. But then I think just over that, over those four years, so I think it's kind of lucky in a way, because when, when I was at RCS, I think it was just me and one other piano player in first year. So we actually ended up doing a lot of gigs, um, kind of supporting people anyway, just being the rhythm section. And then it came to, I think, um, the, the director of the Edinburgh Jazz Festival got in touch and was like, oh, do you want to put on a band? for uh, this year's Edinburgh Jazz Festival. And I was like, yeah. And then I just asked David and Stephen and then that's kind of been it ever since. I feel like they kind of get the music that I write more than, more than most people. When you talk about the sound of the band, I think I, quite, I, I like to describe it as like the, the, the approach is jazz, but the music is folk. So I think that a lot of what we're doing, you know, the actual notes of what we're playing and the melodies and the chords and stuff, they're all kind of, I think, pretty much directly derived from folk music. Um, just I think that comes from growing up in Scotland and being in Glasgow where the folk scene is so strong and just being, just really loving Scottish music. But having studied jazz, we can come at it from a different kind of perspective. So we play this folk music, but it can have solos and it can be a bit more improvisatory and it can kind of, you know, we're not led by the compositions, if that makes sense. We're led by each other. I suppose the folk music that we all like, it kind of stems directly from, you know, musicians in small villages just getting together in a pub or something um, and just playing really old tunes. You know, some of the folk tunes that people still play are hundreds and hundreds of years old. Um, so that kind of tradition of like, you know, it's super rhythmical, it's kind of um, very melody driven, it's made to be hers kind of maybe over a loud bar or something like that. Um, and the, and the harmony is always very simple, so that means that everyone can kind of join in, um, no matter kind of who you are, if that can make sense. Um, so I think what we take from that is that the harmony is very simple, but it's very, what we're kind of doing is like pretty rhythmical and, um, and it's pretty melody driven as well. And I suppose a lot of Scottish music, um, especially sort of the ballads and stuff like that, they're really, really very evocative of kind of the landscape where they've kind of come from. I think that's something that Scottish music is especially good at, is that it's communicating, you know, kind of the hills and uh, the lakes and all that, or lochs even. And um, I think trying to, for us trying to capture that as well is like quite a, quite a good thing to go for. Yeah, and I think rhythmically, um, there can be quite a triplety feel to Scottish folk music. Mm -hmm. So like the tune Jig that we do, um, that's, that's got the jig feel of a Scottish tune, but then it almost kind of goes into a si swing type thing when we treat it that way in a, in a jazz context. Um, I think I speak for all of us when I say that we all kind of came from this thing of really loving American jazz music. But then I've always kind of thought that when you grow up in a certain place in the world, you can't help but be influenced a little bit by kind of the music that's kind of around you. And I think seeing all the folk music around and everyone else being really into folk music and that being on so much more actually than jazz gigs and there's so much more opportunity to see that in Glasgow just because of the nature of the size of those scenes. I think you end up being influenced, you know, it almost felt like we couldn't help but be influenced by that. The template can kind of come from a lot of European jazz or Scandinavian jazz where they're working their folk music into the sound and um, I guess this is kind of like a Scottish taking that template but doing it with Scottish music really. There's definitely a yeah that's definitely a huge thing I've been influenced by actually like um Jan Garbrick and John Christensen as well and um Terje Ripdal all the really great and even to musicians now like RV Emerson and Matthias Ike uh, they take that sort of jazz ethos but they make it very their own country's thing and I think that's what I'm really into as a as a Scottish person definitely. 
honestly not in the slightest. No, I think I think um, I, again I could be definitely different to you guys, but I think um, when I'm making music, I'm trying to, you know, when you're trying to compose, you're trying to. You, you're trying to channel something that comes from like a higher place than all this surface level stuff, you know. I think there's, you know, this is going to maybe sound a bit hippie, but there's a lot of angry, nasty stuff in the world and isn't it, isn't it nice to just try and make that a more pretty place rather than just hit people over the head with stuff, you know. We were very lucky to be in the Glasgow scene when it was just kind of evolving into what it is now, if that makes sense. Almost like we were at the genesis of it in a way. Um, so, so when we were first started gigging and stuff, people were, everyone was just starting to like write their own tunes, make their own bands and stuff. And, and what I kind of found is that, you know, this is, I think this is a big difference between the Glasgow scene and other scenes is that pretty much everyone in the Glasgow scene writes their own music and has their own band and has their kind of own voice in a way. And I think that is a direct product of kind of it being such a small scene, you end up being quite an individualistic musician because there's no pressure to conform to any kind of specific thing, I find. So the new album is called Cairn. And um, if you don't know, a cairn, so when you get to the top of a Munro or a really high hill in Scotland, what a lot of hill walkers do is they take up like stones with them so when they get to the summit they can put a stone and be like oh I put a stone on top of Ben Lomond or Ben Nevis or Ben Ann or whatever um, and so the pile of stones that results at the sort of peak of a hill that's called a cairn so this album's kind of about that I kind of I think the title kind of kind of relates to I don't know trying to communicate Scottish kind of views if that makes if that makes sense Scottish landscapes and that I think the compositions as well on this album are particularly strong. Like they're all, we've been yeah. digging them for quite a long time, maybe longer than the first album, the compositions in that album. So I think that's the music definitely felt true. Pretty set, uh, set in. Yeah, I think in the in the first album, it's definitely the case that we kind of rehearsed the tunes and did the album. But this this one is coming out. We had a lot of time to play, lots of gigs, and I think we're more. It's like more broken in as a mm. band. If that makes mm. sense. Mm.